the Beatles were coming to the fore and dance halls were changing from big bands to pop bands, or as they called them. We were a touring band. I had a boy band at that time called the Bow Weevils and we toured and then very young I became an agent and I supplied through a company called Music and Cabaret, we supplied everybody in Scotland, absolutely everybody, from Sky to Burnt Island to Wick, you name it, we supplied it. And I went to these places and had a great time and I saw what was going on and that was the idea of the book, to give everyone an opportunity to, to recapture some wonderful times. Basically, I've been in all these halls many, many times. But when the early days of the bands, I travelled from Wick to Hoyt to Carlisle and everywhere in between. And everybody had a fabulous time then. And people are inclined not to remember the bad times, they only remember the good. And a book which would evoke memories of people of happy days seemed the right thing to do when everybody's a bit down at the moment. Buckhaven Miners Welfare. I remember Richard Park used to be the DJ there who played a set in the middle. And uh, at that time, the band would play two sets and the DJ would play when the band weren't playing. You know, the 30, 40 minutes in the middle. And gradually, because of the cost of bands, people thought, we'll just use the DJ. That actually it began in the, the mid-60s and developed as bands became heavier towards the end. Sergeant Pepper came in. You had Robert Plant and the Band of Joy touring and the heavier acts were starting to come to the fore. And some of the dance halls didn't like them, so they moved to records to kind of cover the dancing. It was really the way you found a girl if you weren't too verbose. You know, if you couldn't talk particularly well, you could touch her three words, are you dancing? If she danced and you were a good dancer, you were off and running. Or it gave you three to five minutes to tell her a few jokes, maybe smile a bit. And if she had drink and dim lights, you were off. And there's a lot of people who can... uh, particularly ugly people who can thank drink and dancing for their wives. Yeah, I think the photographs are great. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going back myself because given I'm that kind of age where I can go back and I know all those bands and I know a lot of them personally and it's nice to see them with with hair. (laughs) (laughs) The best in Scotland, uh, Dundee, top 10 ballroom, was a wonderful place. The uh, Aberdeen Beach Ballroom, which was a wonderful premises. Strathbeffer Spa and the bars lead directly into the hall it's, it's custom built you know you don't have to go out in the rain you can get drunk and fall through a door into the hall <laughs> it was a visionary that made it <laughs> I thought the Apollo was a wonderful hall it, it was the most inappropriate hall for concerts structurally but it was wonderful it had almost perfect acoustics I tried when I, when I took over I tried to get the Scottish National Orchestra to make it their home and uh, when I went to see it I think it was Sir Alexander Gibson at the time, to ask him, would he consider using the hall? He said, no, 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 no. He says, we were, we played the Greens Theatre at one time. He said, the entire string section disappeared into the bells of the building. <laughs> <laughs> it had a water-powered stage and the stage had collapsed and half the orchestra had gone south and then, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't consider <laughs> The Locarno actually still exists. The balconies there, the carpets, everything. The Locarno has a casino in it. They built a pod. Rather than restructure the building, they simply built the casino inside the existing hall. So the Locarno's there, ready to make a comeback at any moment.